Following the dramatic launch of Booster 7 and Ship 24 last month, SpaceX has been wasting no time on upgrading the orbital launch site and repairing the tank farm. Meanwhile, at Massey, the team is working on a new Starship prototype. Never a dull day at Starbase, they say. Let's find out all the things that are going on over there in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The SpaceX team dug a long trench from the production site all the way to the launch tower. This seems to provide electrical power to the launch site. They can now get rid of all the diesel generators they had to use since it was built. At the launch pad, earthwork on the OLM foundation is also underway. Many pipes have been delivered this week as well. This is a drilling rig working its magic. I don't know exactly the number, but this giant baton has drilled several holes next to the OLM. SpaceX then quickly lowered the rebar cages into the hole, followed by the giant pipe. The pipes are proof of the tremendous depth of the hole. Thank you, La Padre, for this fantastic footage. There are also dozens of other excavators and cranes working here. Watching all these videos and seeing the number of workers fixing the OLM fills me with confidence in Elon Musk's timeline for once. I mean, one can hope, right? But besides that, the pressurized gas canisters are also making their way back toward the water hammer tanks. Kevin Randolph shared an impressive photo of this action. There must have been up to 30 cylinders waiting here to be installed. As a reminder, high-pressure gas cylinders are to blow down the water to the pad cooling or upside-down shower system. In relation to this, Ryan Hansen Space has provided a clear explanation regarding the water-cooled steel plate planned to be installed under the OLM foundation. The term water-cooled plate may be misleading to those unfamiliar with the system as it's not like the closed-loop water cooling used in high-end gaming computers or liquid intercooler systems in high performance vehicles. Instead, the cooling effect primarily comes from water leaking onto the surface of the steel through holes, which cools the metal surface and absorbs energy from the plume simultaneously. Furthermore, releasing the water from the plates eliminates the risk of boiling and steam production within the plates. The top plate is thick enough to prevent rapid heat transfer, preventing the water running through the plate from turning into gas. Now let's get back to Massey, which is a new address that has been quite busy lately. Crews were observed working inside Ship 25 after its latest cryo testing last week. S-25 has been through the first round of tests since last November. As usual, SpaceX didn't comment on the development or indicate how that initial proof testing had gone, but Ship 25's January 14th of 2023 return to the launch site all but guarantees that the testing had gone more or less according to plan. On January 17th, SpaceX lifted Ship 25 onto Starbase's only Starship static fire test stand, further confirming that Ship 25 proof testing went according to plan. Soon after its November 2022 return to Starbase's build site, six Raptor engines were moved into the high bay and installed on Ship 25. The Starship's aft was then likely buttoned up with a heat shield before it headed to the test site to begin its static fire test campaign. That campaign could tell us a lot about the status of Starship prototypes. To date, only two ships have completed full six Raptor static fire tests, and both took days, weeks, or even months to build up to those six engine milestones with multiple smaller tests. If Ship 25 were to skip those preliminary tests and immediately conduct a six-engine static fire, it would be a sign that SpaceX is significantly more confident in the current Starship design. Regardless, so far SpaceX has no confirmation about the next Starship prototype that will be tested to fly with Starship. It's apparent the company has as many as 10 further Starship prototypes in various stages of assembly. It remains to be seen exactly when the next Starship launch will be, however. Meanwhile, SpaceX just announced huge news that they're partnering with VAST to put the world's first private space station into orbit. Based in California, startup VAST Space plans to loft its Haven 1 outpost aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket no earlier than August of 2025, which the companies, both of them, announced on May 10th. 
That initial mission will be followed in quick succession by Vast-1, a four-person jaunt to the new station that could last up to 30 days. Vast-1 will also launch atop a Falcon 9 and its astronauts will ride on a SpaceX Dragon capsule. Vast is thrilled to embark on this journey of launching the world's first commercial space station, Haven-1, and its first crew, Vast-1, Vast CEO Jed McCaleb said in a press release. We are grateful to SpaceX for this exciting partnership that represents the first steps in VAST's long-term vision of launching much larger artificial gravity space stations in Earth orbit and beyond. VAST is young founded just two years ago, and it's very hungry, as McCaleb's words suggest. Eventually, the company aims to operate a 100 meter long or 330 feet multi-module spinning artificial gravity space station launched by SpaceX's Starship Transportation System. Vast representatives wrote, In support of this, Vast will explore conducting the world's first spinning artificial gravity experiment on a commercial space station with Haven 1. Vast added. The company is selling up to four seats on Vast 1. SpaceX will provide astronaut training, spacesuits, and other such services for the mission as it did for Axe 1, a private flight to the International Space Station operated by Houston based company Axiom Space back in April of 2022. Yesterday was also a busy day for SpaceX. SpaceX launched another big batch of its Starlink internet satellites toward orbit and landed the returning rocket on a ship at sea. It was the third launch and landing for this particular booster, according to a SpaceX mission description. The Falcon 9's upper stage, meanwhile, continued making continued making its way to low Earth orbit, where it's expected to deploy the 51 Starlink satellites about 17 and a half minutes after liftoff. Now, let's shift our attention over to China. The Tianzhou-6 spacecraft debuted an upgraded internal design with 20% more payload capacity in order to carry up to 7.4 metric tons of cargo. The cargo ship also carries about 1,750 kilograms of propellant to support the space station, about 700 kilograms of which will refill tanks on the Tiangong space station. The modifications to Tianzhou-6 are primarily inside the spacecraft to improve the packing efficiency of the pressurized cargo module. The spacecraft weighed about 13 and a half metric tons at launch, the same as previous Tianzhou missions. The resupply mission lifted off on a 53 meter long March 7 rocket from the Wenchang launch base on Hainan Island. Oh, I love Hainanese chicken. Anyway, that's China's newest and southernmost spaceport. The exact liftoff time of 9.22.51 a.m. EDT or 13.22.51 UTC was set to coincide with the moment Earth's rotation carried the launch pad under the flight path of the Tiangong space station, enabling a quick rendezvous and docking. It's the fifth Tianzhou mission to the Tiangong space station following a test flight to China's now decommissioned Tiangong 2 space lab a testbed used before construction of the larger Tiangong complex. Tianzhou means heavenly ship in English. Clothing and food, including fresh fruit for the Tiangong space station crew, are packed aboard the Tianzhou 6 spacecraft. The mission will deliver equipment to support 29 scientific experiments, according to China's Manned Space Agency. The Tianzhou-6 mission is the first resupply flight to the space station since China completed assembly of the Tiangong outpost. With construction complete, the Tiangong station needs less propellant for in-orbit maneuvers, so Chinese space officials shifted the cargo load for Tianzhou-6 from an emphasis on propellant to a focus on dry goods. The fuel on Tianzhou-6 to be transferred inside the space station include xenon gas for the Tiangong Lab's electric propulsion system. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you next time.